Hey everyone, it's Matt, and today I'm going to be reviewing a 2012 Chevrolet Volt. This one is the top of the line, has everything you could want on it. Navigation, heated seats, climate control, Bose sound system, everything you want on there. The only way you could pay, you know, go higher in the uh, price is getting one of the special colors like a diamond white or something like that. But this one's a good color. I like this dark charcoal type color. I believe this one is called Cyber Gray Metallic. And what I'm going to do before I go around the rest of the car is let's go check the sticker here because this is what you get an electric car for. These numbers. It gets 94 miles per gallon equivalent when you use the electric only engine. And on this, this being the Volt, for the first 35 to 40 miles on one charge, you can just go all in, in electric on here. It takes about eight hours to charge from a regular three-pronged plug, and about four hours to charge if you get one of the special ones that we have here from Chevy. But either way, that number is huge. That is a huge number. <coughs> now let's say you don't have you ran a charge or something like that happened, you're still going to get 37 miles per gallon on the electric gas engine that powers the electric engine for the car. So either way, you're going to make, you know, you're getting huge, huge, huge numbers out of this. This one does start at around 39, and this one's going to be about 45. But this is probably one of the most technologically advanced cars out there right now. It is my favorite car. I've done a review on this before, but I want to do a true review where we do a drive, go around the car, and I remember last time it was raining, so this is going to be a lot better. So as we walk around to the front, you know, all the high-end Chevys have remote start, and it's going to be kind of funny to hear this one because, uh, you know how it works. Here's the key twice to lock, and uh, that's it. The car is on. It's silent. On my other videos, you know, I've heard like a vroom or something, but right now the car is operating in electric only mode because it still has its charge, and it is silent. The car is currently on, but you wouldn't even know it. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn the car off, and there we go. Let's walk around to the back, unlock it, and we're going to check out the trunk space, or the hatchback space in here, because it's really big. Let me walk back and show you how big this is. You get a lot of space out of this. You put those two seats in the back, and you have a huge amount of space for luggage or anything you'd like to do. So as we walk forward here, even with the seats up, and you do get kind of like captain seats, because you do have that thing in the center for your cups and, you know, whatever you want to put in there. You get a lot of space back here. Good little cargo net for putting all your stuff. I love this car. This is my favorite car. Look how big that opens up. So, you close that up. Very easy to close that. Feels like nothing at all. And let's go and sit in the back seat. This is truly one of the most feature packed cars, so I hope I don't take too long on this. So, there is your back seat. And look at that space. There is that top of the hatchback going all the way down in between the seats you have good access it's a very open car for not being an SUV it feels nice really really nice sitting back here oh, I could just take a nap right now and just relax it's nice very very nice let's go up front what do you guys care about in an uh, electric car you care about the engine, don't you? So what we're going to do, pop the hood, and we're going to take a look at the huge, giant engine that powers this car. 
Not really. It's going to be a tiny little engine. If I can open this up, which I've been having problems today. Now, everything that this car does, everything that it has on it, it's to save you gas and electricity. There is no hydraulic lift on here. Nothing will power that. But here is your engine. There is your Voltec electric engine. There is your gasoline engine that will help you power your stuff here. Very clean. You can see the orange, which you don't normally see. Those are electric ones. So you don't hurt yourself or shock yourself. But it's all very unique. While this is the most technically advanced car, in a way, it has some of the most whoops, some of the most simple features. And I am having trouble with the hoods the, today. Okay, so let's go, and we're gonna go now where you would be sitting in your brand new car. A feature I'd like to show off is uh, those little buttons on the handle. Key goes in my pocket. All I need to do is this, and the door is open. So you're fumbling with your stuff, you have other things in your hands, and you can't get your key. You will still be able to get in your car, and it's easy. That's not just a Volt only thing, it's for a few Chevys. That lets you know that you're in your car with your key, and it's good. Now, let's start up the car. The, what, the sound you're going to hear is just a sound. It's not the engine, it's just to signify the engine's on. So, foot in the brake. Power. That noise can't be turned down. But let's turn down everything here. Let's minimize the fan. turn that down. And this is the car on right now without the gas engine. You can hear a very, very, very slight hum. And that's it. It's amazing. It's like a ghost car. Let's turn this back up, radio back up, because we still need to look around here. Now I said while this is the most technology advanced car, you can see the dual screens. There's your screen which you'll be using for navigation too. Good rendering. I like it. There is your speedometer and all your crucial information that goes right in front of you. That's pretty good. But the front seats, all seats for that matter, are not power. You have your jack to bump your seat up or lower it for you that matter. And to put the seat, you know, back and forth, you have, you don't have a bar, but you have this little handle. You pull it, push back, and in front. Again, another thing to save you, you know, needless amounts of use on, you know, gas or electric. It's a very smart car. There is your OnStar system, you know, it can help you out with that. Roadside assistance, diagnostics, and all that. And, you know, good cubby holes. If you have a speed pass, you can put up there. It also has a charger, so you can charge your phone. It thinks about everything. It really does. So you can put your shifter with more space back here. I just love the layout of this car. It's like a good piece of architecture. More space. Cup holders. Your armrest. And there is your USB and auxil auxiliary ports for your music. The styling on this car is my favorite by far. You can see one line goes from the door all the way up. And in a way you can see it continue all the way down here to where you are on the side. It's a very smooth car. It's a very beautiful car. More features on this, or more things that you should know. Parking brake. It's that little flip switch. Nothing on this indicates if it's on or off. 
It's one of those things which I'm not sure if I'm a fan of. It only shows you that here. It's off. That's the sound of me putting it back on. It's a little bit odd, but if that's what they want to do, that's what they want to do, as long as it's, uh, you know, safe. I think it is. Everything here is a touch screen. I'm not sure if you've seen the uh, new Explorer from Ford. It's very much the same experience. There's no clicky buttons other than these ones here, but all the ones that, you know, all the other buttons are just tap, tap, tap. Navigation. Tap. So it's very easy. Very clean car. Alright, so let me put my seatbelt on. And it's hot, but I'm going to turn the AC down so we can move forward. Uh, just before we go, this car has three different drive modes all displayed up here. Hit it once, it'll show you what you're in right now. Normal, go to sport mode, go to mountain mode, which uh, helps you with your electric electricity here. So we're going to go back into normal. Turn down the fan so you can hear it. Turn off that. So there's that very slim hum, if you can even hear that at all on here. And now we are going to go. Shifter, drive. You can hear road noise, you can hear the little electric engine moving just a little bit, and that's it. Braking is very good on this car. The steering is very loose, but responsive. This is one quiet car. I know the, the Prius, I used to have friends that had a Prius, and you can go up maybe 25 miles an hour, 20 miles an hour, you know, and sneak around. This one can go up to 65 miles an hour in electric only mode. It's a very quiet. Now let's see how much power we have. Good acceleration not even close to flooring it. It's not a dead fish car like the Prius is. I'm a big fan of this. And as we come to a stop here, you can see the digital speedometer right there. Sorry I didn't show you while I was driving, it would be distracting. But this is the most technologically advanced car. It does everything it can to conserve energy in terms of electricity or gas to help you get the most out of this battery. Good things about this battery, while other cars, let's say like the Nissan Leaf, use 100% of their battery. Nissan Leaf being another electric car, uses 100%, charges 100%, goes down to zero. This does not, this only uses 80% to 20%. That gives you a longer lasting battery in the end. What powers this is a bunch of sheet batteries. I am recording this on my iPad currently. Just imagine hundreds of sheets of batteries looking like these iPads. And that's what's under here. Giving a lot of weight to the ground which is good for handling too. Again, you can charge this on a regular three-prong plug in eight hours or get one of the special Chevy chargers, which I have a video of, and charge it in about four hours. So regardless, you know, you go to sleep, you do your commute, and you can, you know, if you go under 40 miles a day, you only use electricity. And it costs you maybe about $1.50 a day, and that's it. Compared to gas, it would charge you a whole lot more. Again, on electric only, it gives you 94 miles per gallon electric equivalent. When you think about the electric bill and on the gas engine, if this doesn't have a charge, 37 miles per gallon, which is amazing by itself. Again, this is my favorite car. I love driving it. I love the way it feels. And Chevy has done a lot to try to incorporate this car with the world. 
making it easy to charge this thing, making it easy to do everything about it. So this has been Matt. I've reviewed a 2012 Chevrolet Volt in cyber gray metallic with an ebony interior. This one does have heated seats. I didn't mention that earlier. If you have any questions, comments, please let me know. Give me a call, 571-281-8980, or subscribe to my page. Comment below. Give me some input. Again, this is being taped on my iPad. I've been working with iMovie to help it out. I'm going to be using that more and more to get these uh, really clean for you. So please let me know what you think. Find me on Facebook and Twitter, too. Alright, so this was Matt, and I'll see you next time.